Hello, today we're going to be talking about uh, the brain, uh, particularly the brain of psychopaths. Um, there's very little known still about the brain of psychopaths, or in fact the brains of all of us. Uh, however, in the last 15 years, um, technology has advanced so that we can actually measure the blood flow in certain parts of the brain when we think or react to certain things. Uh, this is called functional MRI scanning. It actually measures the uh, increased blood flow and the use of oxygen in different parts of the brain. So it's very useful um, and an exciting area of, of uh, neuroscience. Now, the study of psychopaths has still been very limited, and in fact, it's been limited to those uh, serious offenders and murderers uh, and the like who are incarcerated in prison. Uh, and particularly those who score highly uh, uh, in the hair classification tick list of psychopaths. Um, but nevertheless, it's a growing area of interest, and it's very important, I think, um, for understanding of psychopathy. Um, it, it's so important that we understand this condition so that we can protect ourselves, take avoiding action, but also in the future probably have plans how we're going to deal with this even though it looks like the uh, primary psychopaths uh, will not improve through um, talking and counselling and there's been no drug um, being developed and less likely one that they're going to want to take anyway. So what do we know now um, and what has science suggesting uh, uh, to us uh, about the uh, whole um, condition of psychopathy, that whole sorry condition. Well, this is a brain that I have driven, drawn from the side, okay, and I see you on press. Um, and this is the basically the thinking part of our brain and the coordinating part of our brain and the sensitivity side of our brain and the prefrontal cortex is where we make uh, moral judgments and calls. You could say it's a higher centre. Um, Tucked below this, in what they call the midbrain or the or the limbic system, is a, a little nut-shaped uh, part uh, uh, organ called the amygdala. And amygdala is uh, ancient Greek or for almond. So just remember that it looks like an almond. When you look at the brain from the side, you can see these are paired organs. Um, sitting in what we call the temporal lobes, all right, along the side. So we've got two of these guys. Now, this area lights up when we have emotional experiences. In fact, those people with post-traumatic stress syndrome this, uh, have this area light up very easily. Triggers can light this up, can sort of fire off. Um, and that's why uh, this condition is so troubling because people will come home from war and, and bangs behind them or loud noises or uh, any other um, uh, thing that may startle some of us a little bit will startle them a lot. Okay. But what happens in the normal brain, and I'll say in the 99% of us, is that this, <clears throat> this does fire off where we see troubling Im images or we feel threatened. But there is a connection here between all the other parts of the brain, but particularly this part of the brain here called the prefrontal cortex. So although it fires off, uh, we also very quickly, almost instantaneously, have a think about it and make a judgment about it and put it into context and reflect on it. Um, so this is where we, we can make moral judgments about this. So a lot of these tests have been done on people who have been looking at um, uh, troubling images or frightening images, say people who have jammed their fingers in the car door, other people. And the uh, normal person, I'd say the normal person, the controls, um, the, did show a lot of reaction here, a lot of increased blood flow in this particular area, but also in this area as well. So not only were they, were they rather shocked by the image, they are able to put it in context um, and together feel er empathy, because this is also an area that seems to process empathy. However, in those who scored very highly in psychopathy, um, there was less activity. In fact, there was less activity here, but pretty well no activity here at all. So although there was some minor reaction here, there was no reflection, no conscience, and no 
no empathy, if you like. Um, and it's interesting when it was suggested that they themselves would be feeling pain, uh, this was almost as active as the normal person. But again, there was no connection to this area which reflects, which goes some way to, to confirming why people with psychopathy tend to react impulsively, particularly the murderers, but also um, others um, with less physically violent streaks, but may have emotionally violent streaks as well. There's one further thing that has recently become uh, uh, to light, and in some ways even more disturbing, is that uh, when these people were shown images of others suffering, um, not only was there reduced pretty well no activity in these two areas, but this guy here, called the ventral striatum, uh, lit up. Now that is part of what we call the basal ganglia, um, and that is really our reward centre. And therefore when that lights up, it would light up when we feel pleasure. Um, it lights up particularly and produces this stuff called do dopamine um, in addictions. And therefore um, what it seems to show is that not only is the reduced activity in this area that would actually produce empathy, but also there's a delight in other people's suffering as well. And that's very disturbing, but it also fits with their observations. Also recently, they've shown that increased testosterone, um, in fact, reduces down these connections here. So the testosterone, um, if it's raised, in, 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 and particularly men, obviously, um, then, then uh, this enhances the psychopathic behaviour. Um, so there it is, literally in a nutshell, in an almond nutshell. Um, I hope you found that interesting. On the next uh, session, um, we'll expand this into other model models of health as well, because uh, uh, not everything happens because it happens in the brain. The brain is basically a relay station. It's a processing plant. Um, but this, these, this uh, research uh, is proving very valuable and will do in the future as well and I hope you found that interesting as well. So all the best. Please subscribe and debate and criticise and uh, give your own experiences uh, in the comment section be below. S tell me really how this is, seems to fit in with what you've experienced. Okay, so thank you and bye for now. Cheerio.